This is my full and in-depth review of the 11-inch iPad Pro after three weeks of usage. All right, so first we're gonna talk about some of the physical changes. Obviously, the iPad is thinner. That's one of the biggest things they show in their marketing. But as far as the 11-inch goes, it's not actually that much thinner and lighter than its previous versions. And I've discussed that in some of my comparison videos, but I'm gonna throw that up here for you so you can see it's really not a huge weight and size reduction. And overall, it's not a big change. And obviously this iPad is gonna be a little bit smaller of a form factor, and it is more compact than its larger counterpart. And it's also a different aspect ratio. The larger size is four by three, where this is much closer to a 10 by seven aspect ratio. Also something to note is that it technically does have more screen space than its previous versions, where Apple lists that it has 11.1 inches of screen space versus 11 inches on the previous versions. And then talking about that screen, something I love about this new iPad Pro is that OLED screen. I still am shocked at how much it actually has improved things for me. And that may not be you, but for me, it has improved a lot. And I really enjoy watching shows, movies, and even just YouTube videos feel better to me on there. And editing photos and videos is much better on this iPad. And I really like it for those use cases. Something that I opted for on this screen as well is the nano texture display. And I actually really do like the nano texture screen. I think it has a lot more pros than it has cons, at least for my use cases. For example, a lot of people said it really grays out the blacks, but that's really only if it's off center or if you're really looking at it from the side. And looking straight on, the blacks look really black on this display. As you can see here, the way it can deflect the light is super, super helpful. And from where I'm looking at it, I see no light on the screen at all. So you're seeing the light that's next to me here, but I don't see any of that on the display at all. And it's really, really cool. And also just looking up towards you, it does a really good job of blocking out all of the other lights above me. The camera does not reflect back in here like it does for some of the other iPads I have. And this makes it really, really helpful especially for me, because I'm gonna be having this iPad in videos and stuff like that. And it's much easier to film and show in videos when it's not reflecting all my lights back at you. And I now have spent three weeks with this screen and I know durability is a big concern for a lot of people with this nano texture. And I just wanna let you know, as of right now, I have no scratches, no compromises of durability with this screen whatsoever, but I am also pretty careful with my technology. I have seen some videos now actually test the durability of these iPads, and it looks like some kinds of metal can scratch the screen, which means it's a little bit of a soft kind of glass. And I will caution anyone who carries their iPad around keys or anything really that metal, be careful, just don't let it rub and scrape against it, otherwise it's possible it could scratch the screen. However, personally, I don't keep my iPad near harsh metal objects very often, and I don't really want to even try any of that kind of stuff on even a normal iPad screen to see if it won't scratch it or anything like that. So yeah, not a big concern for me, but something I think is worth mentioning. I also know Apple says that you should only clean it with their cloth, and some people were concerned that having to buy even more of these because they're 20 bucks a piece. If this one wears out, it's just gonna be a really poor long-term investment. People have used a regular microfiber cloth on these iPad screens already. And there's been no problem with them using those. Even a regular paper towel won't actually hurt the screen. It's not gonna clean it the best, but it won't hurt the display. So don't feel like you need to use Apple's polishing cloth in order to properly clean your display. If you wanna see my full thoughts on the nano texture and just the regular OLED screen in general, I made a full video. I'm gonna have that link below for you guys if you're curious. Next, I kinda of wanna talk about the productivity of this device. Does this smaller size really stop me from being super productive? And if not, how do I use this in my daily life? Well, I use it for all sorts of different things and the small size has not stopped me. I use it in Photoshop for editing photos and creating thumbnails, and it works great for that. You can adjust the canvas very easily, so even the smaller size does not bother me at all. If I need to look at something close, I get in close. If I wanna look at farther away, I look at it farther away. So that small size does not really stop me in any way here. And for freeform as well, 
this is a smaller canvas. So you can't see quite as much at the same time, but because you can easily zoom in and out and look for what you need, it is not that big of a deal. And I find the 11 inch does a great job in free form as well. Although I do like some parts of the big canvas, the 13 inch, I don't think there's any real downside with using the 11 inch in this app. I also have used this for 3D modeling as well. This is the same project you saw on my 13 inch iPad Pro review, if you watched that. This is a generation one style Megatron gun. This is something I'm working on my spare time, but I actually find that working the 11 inch is sometimes even easier than the 13 inch. This is because I like to use the 11 inch iPad Pro while sitting on the couch or something like that. And the smaller size is much easier to hold manipulate and all those kinds of things. If there's any app that feels a little limited and compressed by the smaller size, it probably would be Final Cut Pro. It's totally usable. And I really do enjoy editing off this iPad. I've edited more videos actually on my 11 inch than I did on my 13 inch. So I really do like it, but there is times where I do feel like things are a little small or I have to really like look close at it to figure out what I'm seeing there. I also find that I have to adjust things a lot more often than with the 13 inch. Usually I can leave that pretty default and it works well, where I'm constantly kind of resizing things to make it fit well on the 11 inch, which again, it's not a big deal. It's really easy to work around and really easy to adjust things, but it is something you want to consider, especially if this is your primary or only use case for the 11 inch. My big takeaway from this is that it can do everything that the larger 13 inch iPad Pro can do. It's just not always as easy as that 13 inch iPad Pro, but I can take it more places and it's more portable in that way. So for me, the 11 inch wins because I can take it wherever I need to go. And that ultimately gives me more productivity than larger space. And really quick, I do want to talk about the 11 inches magic keyboard. I do think they did a really good job of not keeping this too compact and making it still very easy to use. Basically full size letter keys and everything else is just kind of compressed around it, which I think makes a lot of sense. The trackpad, while not as big as the 13 inch, is still bigger than the previous 11 inch trackpad. I find that overall using this magic keyboard is a very pleasant experience. I love the new trackpad. I love the function keys and I really enjoy typing on this. And I don't feel like the smaller size is very limiting or like I feel fatigued by it. In fact, I think they did a really good job of keeping this very, very functional and it does not take very long to get used to and adjusted to this experience. And as far as the Apple Pencil goes, I do want to mention that I do have a full review of this Apple Pencil out now. And if you are curious about anything that this does or how I use it, it's all gonna be in that video. But just to go over the new features really quickly, first it has a squeeze gesture, which brings up a tool set or performs some kind of function depending on the app. Then it has barrel roll, which lets you twist and rotate the tool that you're using while using it, which is really nice to have. And then some more under the hood things. It has haptic feedback now, which is really nice for double tap and the squeeze gesture. And then it also has Find Mine, which I haven't used yet, but it's really nice to know that I do have that if I ever would lose my Apple Pencil. So that's really my review of the 11 inch iPad Pro. I kept this video pretty short because I have talked a lot about this device in many other videos already. So I don't wanna to continue to repeat myself or create unneeded content. So if you're curious about more of my full opinion on this, check out that OLED testing video Check out my comparison between this and the 2018 iPad Pro and check out the size comparison video I did between the 13 inch and the 11 inch. And of course the Apple Pencil review. All those are gonna be essential in getting kind of my full scope of what these iPads truly are. But I hope this gave you a nice summary and review of how I've experienced and been using this iPad in the last three weeks. I really do enjoy this iPad and I really do recommend it for pretty much anyone who loves the 11 inch size and the iPad Pro. And if you went for like a 12.9 inch because of the better screen in the past, I would reconsider the 11 inch because this new screen makes it really compelling. And now really the only difference between the 11 inch and the 13 inch is the size of the screen. You also save $300 right out of the gate by going with the 11 inch size. That's actually a pretty significant money savings for only the screen size being reduced. I don't know why they have the 13 inch priced $300 more than the 11 inch. 
even between the MacBook sizes, they have like $200 between them. I think 200 would have been plenty. And if you are getting a one or two terabyte 11 inch iPad Pro, I would encourage you to at least check out the nano texture, maybe go to an Apple store or something that has it. So you can at least see what it feels like and looks like to you because for $100 more, if you're already going for that expensive of a model, it might just be worth getting that nano texture. But if you're not going for that expensive of a model, don't spend all your life savings just to get that nano texture. It's not that big of a difference. I really enjoy it, but it also is not gonna be for everyone. And especially if you want a bit more of a sturdier screen and one that's more scratch resistant, I would not get the nano texture. I would stick with the standard glass and it's still a very, very good screen. As far as who should upgrade to this new iPad, I think really anyone with an M1 or older iPad should consider upgrading. Especially if you got 2018, I think this is a really good upgrade for you. I think you could even make a case for if you have an M2 iPad Pro upgrading this new 11 inch, mainly because of that screen difference. They've had that same LCD panel for so long and I think this new screen makes it so much better and that's really, really cool. Although depending on your use cases, you may not feel that that's important enough to upgrade. And that brings me to another recommendation. If you're someone who only uses your iPad to watch videos, take a few notes, don't upgrade. Unless your iPad is falling apart or it's so glitchy that you just need to get a new one, don't upgrade. If it's working fine, use it till it doesn't. That's the best way you can use your money. I don't think you should upgrade just because. Now, if you really, really like that new screen, if you really, really like these new Apple Pencil Pro features, if you really like that new Magic Keyboard, all those kind of things, then it is going to feel like a really nice upgrade. But don't feel like you have to upgrade just because it's a new flashy iPad and everyone's telling you you have to upgrade because your iPad's six years old. No, if it works, use it. Some of you may be wondering why I didn't really mention the M4 chip at all in this review. That's because I have talked about it at length in many other videos and shown comparisons and differences that this chip adds. And I felt like reiterating all that would just be kind of pointless here. Instead, I want to show you which apps I'm using for this iPad and how that actually affects my productivity. And I will say the faster chip does make all those apps run smoother. It makes anything you do generative in Photoshop quicker. It makes your Final Cut Pro exports much better. And it makes the experience while 3D modeling improved as well. I hope this video was very informative to you. And if there's anything else you wanna see compare with this 11 inch or test it on this 11 inch, please let me know. I will totally be making a follow up video. And in fact, after WWDC, so less than a week from now, I will be making another review of this 11 inch iPad Pro and see if the new software version has actually changed any of my opinions, perspectives, or use case scenarios for this iPad. So definitely stay tuned for that. I will also be posting a reaction from WWDC, giving kind of a summary of everything that I liked and didn't like. So please be subscribed to the channel and stay tuned for all these future videos. If you're curious about the setup that I use at all, it's all gonna be linked below. As always, thank you for watching. Have a great rest of your day.